The book was originally just going to be about, uh, you know, just getting Mission Chinese stuff down, like you know, like recipes. But then, you know, we get Restaurant of the Year by New York Times. I won a James Beard Rising Star Chef that year, Food and Wine Best New Chef Award. And then it all comes to like a screeching halt because the Health Department of New York City totally came in and just shut our restaurant down twice. We obviously learned our lesson and we're like super awesome at what we do now. But you know, it's a learning thing. You know, like we always say this, but it's very much not a. It's not us like at the top of the mountain looking down and reflecting on what we've done. It's like really, it's been a work in progress. This guy, torta, chicken. You guys want fuku chicken tortas? I'm Danny Bowen from Mission Chinese Food in San Francisco in New York City, and also Mission Canteen in New York City. Taking on the cookbook, I, I, I use this, it's kind of a blanket statement, but like, I mean, it was basically like my life story. Uh, and there's recipes in there too. We wanted to have something like that wasn't available to me when I was starting to make Chinese food. Like here's how you make a classic like uh, Sichuanese mala vinaigrette. That's really hard to find. It's not so hard to find now, but six years ago, eight years ago, it was very difficult to find that information. I was really worried about the book tour. I was just like, how can we make this different than anything else that I've been to? So I was like, well, why don't we just do what we are really good at and go meet up with other chefs and do these book dinners, but do them like in more of a fun, casual, relaxed environment. And I was like, well, we can make it different by just setting up uh, and just playing a show and it kind of being as much about the show like as it is about the food. And like that whole experience, I think, is like, it's really awesome. You don't, you guys have a Sunday or no? No, right? I'm assuming you don't. To date, we've done like, what, I think four dates. Well, the first couple of parties were in New York, in Brooklyn at the Powerhouse, and Anthony Bourdain and I talked about the book and food. You're a nice Oklahoma boy. What the fuck are you doing cooking Chinese food? You're not Chinese. You know, again, it's like- And is it important? No, I know, it's, it's totally not important. And then played a show, Mark's the name of my band. We did something in San Francisco, and then we went to LA after that. I'm trying to get Miley Cyrus to come, is that fucked up? No. I don't know her though. I'm just like, I've been emailing Wayne Coyne because I know that I know him from Oklahoma. And I'm like, hey, we're playing this show tonight and we're doing this dinner at this fucking amazing restaurant. Come. He's like, I'm not in town, but I was like, pass it on to your friend. Uh, you know, when we came to LA, I, I just wanted to like work with people that, you know, that I kind of, that I know. So we obviously hit up Chris at Night Market first because uh, super huge fan of theirs. We've been working on this for months. Everything we've been doing leading up to this moment has been like texting and now it's like rolling up the sleeves, we're doing it. Most food, like book tour dinners are like, you go to a restaurant and you collaborate with another chef and then you just both do this like really lengthy long tasting menu where like he does his classic dish, you do your classic dish. And so I was like, I don't want to do that. So we did this insane party there with a bunch of different chefs and dishes. Chad Robertson came down from Tartine, Andy Ricker from Pock Pock, and Jessica from Squirrel. It's been like halfway like getting to see your friends and halfway making new friendships with uh, new people that you kind of admire. Feels like I decided to invite a bunch of friends over and we wanted to have some fun, you know? The only other chef I've had in my kitchen is this guy right here, Andy Ricker. I think what makes this event a little different for most uh, cookbook tours is that Danny and Chris are doing it. It was going to be frenetic, fun, unexpected shit will surely happen. I wouldn't have missed it. There's no way I would have missed this. You guys know each other? You haven't met? You haven't met? So this is Chad. We're neighbors of Mission Chinese in San Francisco. We're right around the corner. We're called Tartine Bakery. Uh, right around the corner from the original spot. Hey, what's going on? Nice to see you. It's nice to be with a group of peers that are kind of in the same energy and the same ether. And it's nice to be here tonight because we all have our own restaurants. We're pretty like in our space 24-7. So to get together and get to hang out like this is really fun. I brought some booze, so I have a feeling we'll be we'll be here for a long time. There's two seating, so it's 6 and 8.30. Well, mine's gonna be simple because I'll, I'll basically it'll just be ready to go. Okay. And I just all I have to do is just plate it. Okay. That's it. We did two seatings because uh, the the event in LA sold out so quickly. Chad, I'll take whatever jam you got over there for me. Angela, you want a porridge bowl here? Is the menu is anything on the menu from your book? Uh, the wings. 
and the rice porridge. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's I it. think the bread, no, just the wings and the rice porridge. You know, we didn't want to make it hard on ourselves because I've done it the hard way and no one enjoys that. It's not good for the guest, the, the host chef, it's not good for the guest chef, and it's like, at the end of the day, who's, it's just flexing for ego. I love that all the pictures tonight are gonna be just like me holding shit, or like, I'm not gonna be cooking really. What's that? You just, could you know, so show them what you're making. Show everyone on munchies I actually know how to cook, and then I'm not some like, hipster chef. Working with four other chefs in a tiny little kitchen is, uh, it's kind of how these things go, right? It's, uh, it's a little crazy, but you make it work. I believe there's such a thing as too many cooks in the kitchen. It can get a little bit um, hard to like work like super efficiently if everyone's asking you, what can I help you with? Luckily, when all chefs know this, so like when you do these events with chefs, it wasn't, it was amazing because everyone just knows, knew what to do. They'd be like, okay, I, I got you on this, or I'll help you with this. And it all came together. It was a, as perfect as it could be, it was seamless. The idea of this whole dinner is it's gonna be a lot of fun and things are just gonna hopefully come like really fast. So we'll just go dish by dish and whoever did what will just kind of explain it. But this is the bread service, so it's called the Mission Tartine Bread Service. We made the bread this morning, baked in San Francisco and then drove it down. So it's still super fresh. And then buttermilk goes over the butter and then there's anchovies and fermented charred chilies. It's the same bread service that they do at Mission Chinese Food in New York and it's my favorite bread service anyway. It's an easy thing. He just does the hard part and brings the bread that's amazing and I just like put fancy things on it. It's unreal. It tastes super good. It's unexpected and it's just, it's really fun. Don't fill up on bread. I'm joking. You can fill up on bread, I'm just joking. So the next thing is the wings. So the Chongqing chicken wings, these are really hot and numbing. And one of the dishes we've had on since the very beginning. We fry them in two stages to get the skin really crispy. We don't bread them at all. It's got a ton of different warming spices. And there's Sichuan peppercorn. We house that with a lot of chilies. It's just a very classic Chongqing dish. They're very spicy and tingly. There's a lot of Sichuan peppercorn. So if people haven't had that before, they may think they're having an allergic reaction. They're not. It's just their mouth will get numb and tingly. This looks so fucking good, man. Well, uh, they're very, it's very easy to make. The recipe is very easy to make. He's really fearless with, with how he approaches food and in a very unpretentious way has gone, look, I'm gonna fuck with the paradigm. I'm calling it fake Chinese food and I'm just gonna do whatever I want. But what I like about it a lot is that he's really respectful to the cuisine that he, that he borrows from. So. I take no credit for any of this. I didn't make any of this stuff. We just, I just fry chicken wings and put hot shit on it. So. I love that fried chicken wings. Yeah, but they're oh, the cool. best chicken wings in the world. They're hot. They like, they're tingly and hot. But you haven't even gotten the new, like all this next stuff is amazing, so. I'm doing too many dishes. We've got one called Golden Triangles. It's essentially like a seafood mortadella sandwiched between wonton skins fried with a sweet and sour sauce. That's what it is. So there's like, we're going in waves. So this is the second wave. The second wave is, hi, how are you? Good to see you. The uh, second wave is just like the salad -y things. Uh, like the hot apps went out. Andy's doing a really crazy salad, it's amazing. I'm making a dish called uh, Paknok Gol, which is a Thai Yai Shan style pennywort salad from Northern Thailand. Garlic oil, fried garlic, sour tomatoes, pork cracklings, peanuts, dried fish and chilies. And it's all kind of scrunched together, so it kind of makes like a, a massage, kind of almost dry kind of salad. making a version of cup of noodle with noodles made with chicken skin and fat and a powder like what you would get in like your little plastic uh, cellophane bag of dehydrated chicken skins, dehydrated Thai shallots and Thai scallions and a bunch of dehydrated vegetables as well as some frozen peas because we should have frozen peas in there. One of the best foods ever. <laughs> I fucking love frozen peas. Frozen they always peas taste delicious. We were trying to sprout them, dehydrate them and none of it was tasting delicious, and we're like, Fuck it. yeah, frozen peas rule. So the Westlake rice porridge is a chicken stock, jasmine rice, and like a whole chicken, we just drop it in there. It's seasoned with fish sauce, mushroom powder, salt. Then we're dropping in this raw flap steak, salmon roe, white pepper, there's a raw egg yolk, and cilantro and scallions. So number one is the porridge, rice porridge. Amazing. I think the course I'm most excited to try myself will be all of other chefs where they look the same. I want that mall spaghetti so bad. So bad. Corner. Corner. Hey Angela, let's start talking about, once you're done with that, um, let's start talking about dessert plate. Pasta's out, so we're gonna start going on uh, toast. 
The second to the last course is Renee's Rye, which is made with sprouted berries and buttermilk and beer and long fermented, super healthy bread. And that's a, um, again, a collaboration between Tartine, Richard and I, and, uh, and Angela and Danny. And it's a squirrel tribute toast, so it's kind of a tribute to uh, Jessica. I, I've never eaten in a restaurant, and I feel like it's just, it, this is what I would imagine she would it taste like, so. I think we're putting crema, some jam, some seeds, and some spicy microgreens, like mustard greens. <laughs> Do you think black pepper would be good on that? Like a big like, course black pepper? Or, you know, like, or, or scroll it, vibe yeah. is like What'd you do? salt, malden salt. on top. Yeah, so we'll hit it with some malden. That's really great. I don't know what else to say. I feel honored, guys. <laughs> Am I upset that I didn't do this myself? A little, a little bit. Uh, we should probably talk about this banana split that we still haven't... Uh... Uh, we were just talking about that. So I was thinking what we should do is we're going to cut the ice cream into squares and put it like shingled on a plate. Sick. Where's the ready whip, guys? So I think this is something, this course, the, guys, the dessert course is Shesselson. So you just tell us where to go. Hi, guys. Hi. How's it going? Fantastic. Oh, you're bringing the ready I'm, whip. Yeah. Rocking the whip. There's some classy stuff in here, and then there's some crazy stuff in here. We want to be all over the place, not specific to any region, but to just having fun. So, like, I see his food as having fun. I don't think he puts boundaries and what he does. I kind of think he has ideas and he has impulses and he sort of goes with it. I think he's probably, you know, long, actually along with Chris, is one of the most exciting young chefs in the, in the country right now. He's doing really interesting stuff and uh, yeah, he's a, a really interesting guy. I haven't played drums in like 10 years and this is like the fifth show we played. So it's like, we never practice, which is another thing about our band is like, we should probably practice, but it's cool, like, uh, Danny's about to play. It's gonna be debaucherous. It's gonna be as abrasive as hell. Yeah, of course, of course. So Narcs is a band that I'm in with uh, two of my friends, Jeff Rickley and Chris Conley. Jeff, the band he's in now is called No Devotion. He also plays with a band called United Nations. Chris is in Saves the Day. What happened was the book tour was coming up. I was like, it's coming up, guys. I'm gonna be going to these different cities. Do you guys actually wanna do this? And they were like, yeah. Danny's one of the most dynamic people I know. We've hung out a lot, we've traveled together. He's got like the fucking lightning bolts coming out of him. Like, just like an aura, he's just like, ah. Live in the flesh, narcs, you know? Like, I, I, need, I need to be here and see it in person. Danny's music is gonna be like, sort of a surprise. And then two seconds later, you're gonna say, yeah, of course, it's like, makes sense. It's just a pure outlet for fun and happiness, and like, it's just such a really awesome thing. And I'm, and it's still like, I'm like in a band with two guys that I look up to and like adore. You know, in the same way with like, bread service and caviar and all that shit that he does, like, you think like, Man, where is this coming from? And then two seconds later, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's Danny, like, of course. Like, wasn't he always in a band, you know? But he just started it. That's the cool thing about music, there's always something new, and in food as well. It's like, you might think you know everything about Chinese food, but you don't. You might think you know everything about, like, music, and you, have, you obviously don't, especially if you think that it's about technical skill. It's also about just, like, raw feeling and power. LA was so awesome because everyone was just so enthusiastic to have us there. I mean, I've never felt so welcome. There were a lot of people that were just super excited and blown away and, and happy that we were there and asking us to open a restaurant there. And people come in, they kind of forget what they're going through for like that hour and a half that they're here. It's kind of like seeing a show. That's what we always wanted to do and I've always wanted to accomplish is like, if you can come in and forget about all the shit that's going on, you can have a good meal and enjoy someone else's like, time or presence. I enjoy that. I enjoy like people coming in and leaving really happy. It's very captivating for me and also uh, kind of surreal. All right, everyone. <laughs> Ew, no, don't do that. He's not going to listen to it. How am I going to do it? <laughs> hey, Chris, what happened to your mouth? This is disgusting. Come on, you got to go back. You got to go put it back. 
<laughs> so, so, we, so you said it tastes like a Jolly Rancher threw up. <laughs> this is the way to do it. I mean, I think that the book, like the, the thing that maybe hopefully people get or you get from the book is that like, no matter how big it gets, it's always going to be like we're, I'm of the people, like from the people, and it's definitely for everyone. And I think that I'm very proud of that. Thank you. You were like a huge mess. Sorry. And his crew. And his crew. And his crew. And his crew. Lo sé, lo sé, toma. Tequila, te gusta o no? Ay, ay, ay.